The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, peace to you, hope to you, as we receive these blessings in the Messiah Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we don't want to miss the good news of great joy, that you have indeed come to this world and to our very lives to fill us with hope, to bring to us peace. Open us up to receive the light and the grace you have for our lives. Let it shine through the shadows. And so, gracious God, bless us in our preparations to welcome Jesus and all his goodness into our lives and into our homes and into the gloom of this world. Tune our ears to hear the message of John to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Well, our church is looking all dressed up for Christmas, isn't it? Uh, the greenery is up and our incredible Christmas tree is, uh, is here shining before us. And uh, I hope you take special notice of the Christmas tree. Uh, during the summer, uh, several of our ladies made new Christmas and they're on the tree and they uh, freshened up the, the older ones. Uh, the tree is full of symbols of the way God uh, throughout history has broken into this world to bring hope to people's lives, to bring peace to people's lives, and especially uh, the Christmas that reflect Jesus, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, the very presence of God in, in human flesh. So, so many of our Christmas are the monograms of Christ. And they show to us the good news that he brings to us. Good news of hope, good news of peace, good news of salvation. So take a look, and, uh, and we're grateful for our, our ladies for their labor of, of love in preparing these beautiful Christmas for us. Our homes, too, are being decorated, or at least I started some decorating yesterday. Some of you may already have your homes decorated. 
uh, for our Christmas celebration. Our community, too, uh, puts up greenery and uh, warm greetings for these cool days. Preparations are being made, and it's all looking so good. But this morning, we're here to go deeper than our outward preparations. Our outward preparations are part of it, but this morning I think we're here because we want to go deeper in our preparations. This morning we're here to listen to the message of John the Baptist. A strong voice, a challenging voice, a voice we need to, to hear to and to heed as he speaks of preparations of our hearts, preparations of our spirits, getting us ready to welcome God into the world, and God into our lives. So much more than, than just the decorations, we're preparing our hearts and lives to welcome the very presence of God. Prepare the way of the Lord. It's John's message. Prepare the way of the Lord. So how are we preparing? How are we preparing our hearts, our spirits, our lives? How are we getting getting ready to welcome the, the holiness, the goodness, the grace of God into our lives and into the depth of our spirits. In some ways, I think uh, preparing for a party at home might be a little bit easier. Uh, maybe a little easier than preparing to receive God into the depth of our spirits. At home, to prepare for a party, we get busy cleaning, vacuuming, dusting. Uh, we gather up all the piles and we hide them, in the way, hide them away in that one room that no one is allowed to go in. Uh, do you have one of those rooms? Uh, just pile all the clutter and all the papers and stuff into that one room and then close the door. No one can go in. <laughs> That's what we do at my house. Well, the message of John the Baptist is an encouragement for us to go even into those closed rooms of our lives, of our spirits, so that we can open them up to allow God to come in, to come in with a cleansing mercy, to come in with a healing of grace. John says that he cleanses with water, but Jesus comes to cleanse us with the Holy Spirit and fire. In a way, this like John is doing kind of a surface cleaning <laughs> to prepare the way for a, deep, a deeper cleansing that Jesus will bring with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, fire burns out all of the imperfections, doesn't it? Jesus comes to us to remove from us everything that keeps us from knowing and fully taking in the life-giving love of God. The Holy Spirit moves in deep within our spirit to transform our lives with this mercy of God. To bring God's grace, God's undeserved and unconditional love uh, to be real within our spirits. So real that it transforms us. The way we see ourselves. The way we see others. The Holy Spirit moves in deep within our spirits to transform our lives with mercy, with God's grace, and with God's healing for the ways we have been so hurt in the past. John wants everyone, everyone to be ready to be ready to be transformed by this incredible mercy and grace and healing of God. John lived in a, in a difficult and tumultuous time in the history of our world. John sees hope. John sees hope with God coming to the world as God's kingdom comes near in the presence of Jesus. John wants everyone to be ready to receive this kingdom of God, to receive God's mercy into their lives, to receive God's welcome, God's undeserved, un unconditional love into their lives. 
John wants people to be ready to receive God's healing for their lives. So that they are transformed and the whole world is transformed and God's kingdom truly comes. I think we also live in, in difficult times. Sometimes even tumultuous times. And I think we are also desperate for a deep cleansing that comes through God's Holy Spirit and fire of the Spirit. In some ways this sounds frightening. But we remember that this is the God of steadfast love. This is the God of eternal love. This is the God who claims us as his own people, his own precious child, to live in his love day by day and for all eternity. So God comes to us to bring to us the very thing we need for life and for salvation and for the life of all the people of the world. And this is what we pray every day, isn't it? When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God is answering our prayer. God is coming to us. God is coming to us to bring justice, to bring peace, to bring hope, to bring a deep healing, to bring us salvation. Prepare the way of the Lord. We have to prepare ourselves to receive this incredible gift. To truly take it in so that it does indeed transform us. Prepare to receive the kingdom of God. Prepare to live in the will of God. To prepare to receive the Holy Spirit of God and the cleansing and purifying fire of Jesus. So that everything that keeps us from knowing God's reign is removed. And it's replaced with God's healing, with God's hope, with God's enduring peace. So we consider today, what is it in that room of our heart, that room of our life, that room of our spirit that we, we keep closed, we keep hidden away, What's in that room that we want Jesus to cleanse, to forgive, to heal? More than anyone else, we can trust Jesus. We can trust Jesus with what keeps us down. Because he wants to raise us up to new life. What is in our lives that is contrary to the kingdom of God? What do we want cleansed from us so that we can more fully absorb God's reign for our lives and for other people's lives? How can we open ourselves up to this goodness that Jesus has for us? To help us in our preparations and here at Grace, uh, we have several opportunities. Uh, each Sunday and, and throughout this season, where we prepare ourselves, where we prepare our spirits to receive the Lord into our lives. Each Sunday, uh, we start out our worship with confession and forgiveness, don't we? An honest uh, cleansing of our spirits, seeking God's mercy. And hearing the good news that we are forgiven. Totally and completely. Every Sunday we provide the Holy Communion meal. That brings to us God's healing presence through bread and wine. The body and blood of Jesus. Healing us. Bringing us salvation. Then we have extra opportunities to care for people to care for them with the love of Jesus, the people who are hurting in our communities, in our church family, as we share gifts with children in our community, as shoeboxes are filled with goodies for our homebound members to assure them that they're not forgotten, that they're part of the family and they are loved. 
We also have opportunity to be a part of feeding people who are hungry and who are desperate for, for basic things in life, providing shelter and clean water and bringing justice to people throughout the world who are oppressed by po poverty and the cruelty of this world. We can make a difference as we shine the light of Christ into their lives. We have opportunity to share God's transforming love as we go caroling to our, our homebound members or as we sing in concerts like we had a concert this past Friday evening here. And also Friday evening we shared the, the banquet of, of goodness with our, uh, the members of the Thrive Clubhouse and their family, showing them the love and dignity that we know in Jesus. In these and many other ways, we look at how we can answer other people's prayers as they too cry out for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, even in their lives. As our lives are transformed by the Holy Spirit and the fire of Jesus, we want to then share it with others. So many people are, are lonely and hurting and desperate for God to come to them. We can bring them compassion and hope and healing as, it's, uh, as we show them Jesus. Prepare the way of the Lord. Get ready. Get ready for the transforming grace of Jesus to fill you and to spill from you into the lives of others who are also praying. For God's kingdom to come, God's will to be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.